information brings us closer to people. We, when we know something about someone, there's a sense of connection. But the information ecology we live in today has this twist of this whole thing upside down. Just because I can follow the details of Angelina Jolie's life doesn't mean she knows that I exist. Now this is what scholars talk a lot about as parasocial relations. But with Facebook, what you can do is you can turn your closest friends into celebrities, <laughs> characters you gawk at and obsess with, uh, without actually gaining the benefits of social intimacy and bonding. <laughs> simulation creates cognitive connections, but it is possible for there to be too much simulation. We don't want a disconnected, numb society, or a society of unequal social connections. So driving towards greater and more intense stimulation may not be what you. we want. Of course, there's money here, and people will try to manipulate this dynamic for their own purpose. There are folks who put out highly stimulating content or spread gossip to get attention, and in an attention economy, that works. Right? And they succeed, they create a pretty unhealthy cycle. So we have to start asking ourselves what uh, balance looks like, and how we can move towards an environment where there's uh, incentives for individuals to consume healthy information content, where we create content that benefits society as a whole, or, at the very least, how not to feed the trolls. Now the third key issue is homophily. In a networked world, people connect to people like themselves. What flows across the network flows through edges of similarity. The ability to connect to others like us allows us to flow information across space and time in impressively new ways. But there's also a downside. Prejudice, intolerance, bigotry, and power are all baked into our networks. In a world of networked media, it's easy not to, um, to get access to views from people who think differently and um, have different perspective. Information can and does flow in ways that creates and reinforces social divides. Democratic philosophy depends on shared information structures, but the combination of self-segmentation and networked information flow means that we lose um, the common rhetorical ground through which we can converse. Now, throughout my studies of social media, I've been astonished by the people who think that XYZ, whatever site, is for people like them. I interviewed gay men who thought Friendster was a gay dating site because all they saw was other gay men. I interviewed teens who believed that everyone on MySpace was Christian because all they saw were profiles that, that contained biblical quotes. We all live in our own worlds with people who share our values, and with network media, it's often hard to see beyond that, especially if we don't want to. Now, ironically, the one place where I'm finding people are being forced to think outside of their box is the trending topics on Twitter. Consider, consider a topic that trended a few weeks ago, things darkies say. Started in South Africa, the topic is fundamentally about language and cultural diversity.